party when I come to town. You can bring your mom and daddy, sister, and your cousin out. Yeah, you in the lead, but you ain't hooping around and tear you out. Before you judge me, you need to go and wipe the mirror off. Try to turn me down, only thing it do is veer off. Showing fake love, I can tell it once I say it all. I just stay cool, act like it wasn't weird at all. Most of the people that should be there, not who they appear at all. If you want on top, then you wouldn't hear it cheer at all. But I ain't got no top, I don't need a chandelier at all. I ain't got no top, cause I be really out my mind. When the head don't work, I guarantee they get the line. They all talk, dog, it's a room full of brides. I'm ready to the means that it's in my bloodline. I'll have the king, make the president resign. And if I'm not the king, then I'm making doves cry. I'm stepping on the scene like I never did reply. I ain't gotta justify, I'm cool. Tear down, tear down, tear down, tear down, tear down. down. Boosted on my cardio, I used to get the run around. I've been doing this since I had to work at Mama House. Tear down, tear down, tear down, tear down, tear down. Everybody eating this a party when I call the time. You can bring your mama, daddy, sister, and your cousin out. Beautiful South Florida. There's a look at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Today we hit week 10 and we've got a good one in store between the Cleveland Browns and the Miami Dolphins. The shadow's starting to get a bit longer. Week 10 of the NFL season is here, and we're underway on EA Sports. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Second and six, just inside the 30. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson. He's got a man complete. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A big pickup of 38. Things are looking pretty darn good on this first drive, aren't they? Came right out, set the tone, this time with a big pass play. And if the peek behind the curtain that they gave us or their game plan, I don't think that's going to be the last one we see. I think you're exactly right about that. First carry now for Kareem Hunt. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And they move this all the way down to the nine. That was excellent from start to finish, from the blocking to the running, just well executed. And now let's look ahead because after that, how about a little play action, maybe a little bootleg, and get the quarterback out on the corner and give him a little run-pass option. And they're right down here looking for six. They'll run with Chubb. A pickup of four on first down. It'll be second and goal. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there, but that's a nice job to chew up a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. Second and goal from inside the five. Chubb again. And good work there defensively. So they're able to keep him out of the end zone. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists. And if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Throw left side, caught by the tight end, Njoku. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Now Watson will step away, and out comes Kate York to handle this fourth down field goal try for the Browns. York able to send this one through. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. Come on. 
into and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their 25 yard line. They'll run here with Raheem Mostert. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. They are such a talented team at defending the perimeter and taking away throws to the outside. Great confidence, great skill. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Dolphin first down. Now look, that wasn't a huge game, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched it more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake, and they've taken care of that early. Here we go. Here we go. From midfield, here's Tua. Firing quickly, but it's incomplete. The Dolphins sit 6-3 and three on the year. The Charles, they were losers last time out. What do you think they need to do differently here? Well, I don't think it needs to be as drastic as burning up last week's game tape or not watching it, but the attitude has to be what's done is done. Let's move on. Put that one behind them galvanize themselves and go forward and get a win in this one. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. Got a man complete to Cedric Wilson. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 29-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. Here we go. Three, Six, mega. Two and now on first down. Touchdown, Dolphins! Tyreek Hill, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Dolphins are able to answer the early three points and take a first quarter lead. Extra point and good by Sanders. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. And that one will bounce. the end zone so we will start here at the 25 the Browns drive about to get started and they had lost two in a row prior to getting the open week last weekend so potentially a chance for them to get away for a bit keel up and come back strong that's what the hope is anyway because you're going to find out now with your team are you still focused on being the best you can be for the rest of the season with the things going the way they have earlier this year? Under pressure now, Watson, and down he goes. So after the sack, here's second and 14. Now Chubb running right. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 53 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. On first down, Watson. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense has other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone.
To throw again on second down. Watson eluding the pressure right. And he wisely will throw that one away. Well, sometimes the defense just beats you. Great coverage from the secondary. All of them in the proper position. So instead of trying to throw into tight coverage, he found a way to throw it away and come back and try again the next down. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Had to get in there and knock another one away. I think maybe that tough rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder. Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm is going forward. Incomplete pass. Well, good start for him in this one here in the first quarter, and he's now two for two on field goals. And I know while the offensive coaches are telling their guys, hey, let's leave the kicker out of it unless it's an extra point. This could pay dividends if this game is tight down the stretch. His confidence is going to be sky high if they need him for a big-time kick. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And they have the game here followed by the open date on the calendar next weekend. And Charles, this is a crew that you have to think really is relishing the opportunity to be on the couch for a few days. Yeah, they certainly are. But let's face it, partner, they can't get caught looking ahead to that couch time while they're playing this one. They've got to take care of business first. Three, three. Ready. They run out of the shotgun with Mostert. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. So that time, they get the tight end on the hold. Normally, he's a pretty good run blocker, but this time, he just didn't get his arms extended and let go quickly enough. The flag came out as a result. Hey, man. Now Tua. And that will fall incomplete. Oh, they took a shot there on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. Second quarter from Miami. It's the Dolphins with the football as they've got it with a third down and long coming up. Although for the offense, they're not too happy about it. But for the defense, what a big time play for them. Never give up on anything. Sometimes you create your own points. But the receiver, hard to fault him. He's just going for extra yard. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. But you have to take care of the football. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee. And he'll take over at the 25. The Dolphins at the line, ready for their next drive. Well, partner, fast forward with me for a second. Remember, next week they have the open week, so they're going to get some extended rest. Does that change how they manage the rest of this one? He's got a man complete! And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Tua sets up to pass it. Another catch there for Waddle. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. That's a nice catch there. Remember, he had the fumble earlier. No way he was giving up the ball in that situation. Secured it tight to his body and picks up the first down. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. He's going to drop this underneath to Mostert. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. 
Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they can be set up with a first and goal. So three plays already first and goal, and they are wasting little time. Mostert is into the end zone. Touchdown Miami. Finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL. A complete back. Three down, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. The Browns drive about to get started. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, put a long field goal to at least get him three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. Open man here, shorts complete. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. He's got some space. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Here's Watson. Escaping the pressure right. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Deshaun Watson, so multidimensional, able to scramble for the first. Well, he and his offense were staring down what was likely a three and out. Zero fear from his side, though. Never doubt for a second they pick up the first. He's ready to pull the trigger on the keeper the moment it revealed itself. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. From just shy of midfield, Watson. He's going to have the hook up to Schwartz. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 41-yard line. Give to Hunt here on the option. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. 42 yards rushing for him now to this point. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before, they always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Wide second down, right back to Hunt. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. That one, a first down pickup of eight. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. On first down, it's Watson. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly 
and knocked it free. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, every point certainly counts at this stage of the game, but after driving so far, you absolutely know they want to finish it with six instead of three. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Here's Watson. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked up by Xavier Howard. And the Dolphins are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. Had a bit of a lane there, took advantage of it. Give him seven there on the first down carry. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Looking to pass. Tua. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Look at a good friend in football always talks about predictive history. He's got one of their two touchdowns. You can understand why they tried to find him again. Weren't able to connect, but the thought, that was good. Returnable for Grant. A 40-yard punt, five yards on the return. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. The Browns drive about to get started. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Letting one fly deep for Cooper. Well, Charles, you know, so close to halftime there. You throw the interception. Not only that, you do give it to them in plus territory as well. Yeah, they were pushing real hard to try and get something more on the board on their side of the ledger right before the half. Looking at it with 2020 hindsight, though, might have been better to hand it off a few times, hoping to get something to break instead of putting the ball in the air and, of course, putting the ball in jeopardy. Wilson's got it complete. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. likely be the last play of the first half. Tua, the final shot before half. Tua getting it quickly out to Waddle. Then he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. And now we'll get a late timeout as it comes in the waning moments of quarter number two. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. So the two teams will head to the locker rooms here in Miami with the Dolphins on top. As we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Time over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The Dolphins in front, and they'll be in possession of the football first as the second half gets started. And we will not have a run back here as the second half starts with a touchback. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. 
And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half, they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it. But I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities. And I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Two are going to throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around. And I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense okay, right. forcing that incompletion? So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Here's Tua. That's going to be caught by Waddle. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Dancing to his left. Oh, this is intercepted, intended for Hill. Picked by Ronnie Harrison. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. That is a tough way to start the third quarter. You get the football, open to drive it down, put it in the end zone, and take the lead. Instead, they give them the football. And I think the key here is for them to not get discouraged. That is not how they drew it up, not how they saw it in their mind. But there's a long way to go in this game. You know, they just got to find a way to come back one play at a time. Yes, it's a cliche, but they can get it done. 58 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Well, as we've learned over the years, just because a guy plays left tackle doesn't mean he doesn't have run blocking abilities. And we just saw it there. Controlled the line of scrimmage, created a big game. That's kind of a bonus. He's there to protect that high value that you have back under center, but he creates space in the run game. Yeah, not only can he dance, he can mash too. Now a first down throw, Watson. And this one is incomplete. We know he has a lot of confidence in his arm and likes to force it downfield, but the coverage was tight there. Fortunate it wasn't picked off. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing again, it's Watson. He's got his receiver, Cooper. And out of bounds, all the way down at the three. A good pick up there at 22. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there. And now they're looking at a first and goal. Watson. Flushed out right. And Joku pulls this one in. He's got it for a Cleveland touchdown. A three-yard touchdown pass. And the Browns have retaken a third-quarter lead. Extra point by York is up and good. And that gives him a three-point lead. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. at the line ready for their next drive so now Charles this drive maybe a touch more important trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out yeah and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game you're going to have games where it just oh this is intercepted intended for Hill picked up by John Johnson and he takes this one back in 
into the end zone. And the Browns defense has a touchdown. The York on now for the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. All right, guys. You had your fun? All right. Throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. On second and 10, Tua. He'll get this into the hands of Mostert. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That one good for 13 and a Dolphin first down. One well, of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to count for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. On first down, Tonga Bailoa. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one good for 26 and a first down. This one was all about clearing space for this play to work because he's got leak out of the backfield to his right and then angle his way up the field. And a really pretty throw to put it on him and create the big play downfield. Now a nice throw here right side. He holds it in. And he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. The gain of 39 that time. Now we know this offense has the potential to strike quickly, and they just bit off two huge plays on back-to-back -back snaps. So on the other side of the ball, you've got to go Band of Brothers thought process. And they're into the end zone, but it's not verified yet. Hold on, there is a flag down. So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement and then when they realize those points aren't going to count? Can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone? They'll get that out wide to Waddle. And he's able to break out of one tackle but then quickly brought down. Three yards is the gain that time. Second and goal. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. They'll run right side with Mostert. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. Raheem Mostert, his second rushing touchdown on the year. And the Dolphins have cut it back within a score. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And the lead is down to a field goal. More stand out now following the touchdown to kick. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. The Browns drive about to get started. Third quarter, 
despite their defense giving up that last touchdown. And we'll see if they can get the equalizer here on this drive. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. On second and 12, Watson. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A gain there of 30 big ones. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Give to Hunt here on the option. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. They'll give to Hunt here on the option. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Two yards, good enough for a first. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven, reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive. But a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now it's Watson. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. That time, multiple defenders getting pressure. And it's a loss of six. Yeah, some real defensive resistance there. Saying not so fast to a good drive. And then much to the end zone the last time. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. The Browns send out their punter now as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. Fair catch called for and taken just inside the 10-yard line. Officially, that'll be marked down as just a 28-yard punt. And the Dolphins' drive will start deep in their own territory with a first and 10. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And you sense the tide turning. They scored, then their defense forced the punt, and now a chance to ultimately take the lead here late. Hey, hey, please. Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and ten. Flush to his right. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. Oh, that's good decision-making right there. Understood down and distance. Knew it wasn't third down, and he still had another opportunity to earn the first down. Good job throwing it away and avoiding an interception. Two and once again here on second and ten. That's caught by his big tight end, Mike Kosicki. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch. It's still an effective gain, nonetheless. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. A three-yard loss. Fourth down now. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Browns will take over first and 10. 
The Browns drive about to get started. A little less than four minutes remaining, and the margin for error is small with this slim lead. Operate within your four-minute offense here, Charles? Definitely. And remember, the four-minute offense doesn't always correspond to what's up on the clock. What they need to do is play a little bit of keep away right now. Run the clock down. Make sure their opponent doesn't get the ball back. Their dream scenario, get enough first downs and make them yeet up their timeouts so the game ends when you're kneeling down with the football. To throw on second and six, Watson. Looking deep downfield. And this is caught. A big play that time for Cleveland. 54 yards. Hard to believe that arm strength was a knock on Deshaun Watson coming out of Clemson, but he showed what he's got there. And for a while when this place opened, all the talk was about punts hitting the Giants scoreboard here in Arlington. I don't think we ever heard about a pass hitting the scoreboard, but that's probably about as close as you're going to get. That one was way up there. Chubb is into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. So it's a pretty good season he's putting together running the football. That now 10 rushing touchdowns on the year. And we know this is a passing league, and those numbers throwing the football, they seem to go up and up every year. But there's still something to have a reliable back you can count on in the red zone to bring things home for you. And that's what he's been doing all season long. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Now Tua. He'll hit Mostert again here. Four yards, the pickup, first down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. At that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Tua. Open man, it's Preston Williams. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 38-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Tua. This will be caught. It's Waddle. And they'll wind up getting this with all the way down inside the 20. Two and a throw. And he is into the end zone for the touchdown. So they still need a miracle with a clock where it's at, but they get one piece to the puzzle done. Still have hope. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. The clock showing 19 seconds to go. And this is going to be recovered by the hand seam. 
And that should just about put a camper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number as empirical. Well, somebody lit a fire under that offense during the break, Charles. Remember, they trailed an intermission. They come out, they have the big second half, and that lifts them to the victory. And Brandon, trailing at halftime, we always talk about teams... Whenever I touch down.